Here's three PowerPoint tricks which I wish I knew earlier and that could have saved me a lot of time over the past few years. Let me know which one was your favorite down in the comments below. Starting with number one, unlocking the power of master slides for pictures. And when I found this one, it kind of changed everything. Most of us, we all know these standard PowerPoint master slides. So if we click one, we can add images to this page. Let's do that. Go to insert icons, go to the image tab and let's type in nature, select this one and then insert and it will insert at the bottom of the page. The problem is it never really fits the way you want it to fit and you always need to position it correctly, crop it and then expand it so it fills the entire box that you want. Let's say you want an image that covers half the slide, this would be a process and it's kind of time consuming to do it. Now there's another way and that is if we go into the view tab, go to slide master and we can create our own slide masters here. Let's take this one, remove everything because we're not going to use it. Go to insert placeholder and look for picture. This way you can drag any box on the slide that you want and you can just release it whenever it meets the middle of the slide. Go back to slide master, close. And now let's add a new slide layout and we're going to change it to this title slide. Now, if we go to the icon tab or the image tab again, and we look for same thing, nature, we add it to the slide. It automatically fits half of your slide in that placeholder box. Now, some of you might have already known this, but it doesn't stop there. If we go to the slide master tab again, we can create a lot of custom designs. So let's start from a clean blank slide master, go to insert placeholder, go to picture and drag a rectangle on the screen. And you can already see it's using this shape in the background. So what we're going to do is we're going to edit shape, change shapes, and now you can choose any custom shape that you want. Let's say we want a circle. If I now drag the box, we can see that the circle is placed in the box. So let's position it in the middle, copy it three times and once more. Then we leave the slide master, go to our new slide. Let's do it like this, new slide. And we can see that we have created a circular placeholder from the slide master. Go to insert, icons and stock images. Now let's type in nature and select three images. I'll choose just the first three. Insert and they automatically appear on your slide. This is pretty easy if you want to quickly modify and add images into a standard format that you use quite a lot. Previously, I would have gone for this adding the image, going to crop, crop the shape, circle, then crop to aspect ratio one on one, and then scale it down so it fits the position of the slide. Now it's a lot easier if you work with consistent designs, you can easily add them there in your slide master. Now, last thing, if you go to your slide master and you want to change the background, that is also possible. Just format the background in the slide master to, let's say, a dark template. Close it. Then you can see everything changes nicely with this image. And this is kind of a time saver if you work with inserting a lot of images on your slides, especially if you want to just simply drag and drop them in. Because that also works if let's create uh, two new slides. Let's create one with the half image and then three images. If we just use our folder, we can just drag the images on top of the slide. Let's say we drag one here. It will fit in. Go to the three image tabs. And now let's drag in three more images. Drag it up there. Straight from the folder, you can drag them in. And that is, for me at least, it's a big time saver in making presentations. So now that our slides are consistent, let's organize them like a pro. And for that, we transition to number two, which is mastering the selection pane to organize objects. Have you ever struggled with endlessly sending objects to back or backwards in PowerPoint and never really finding that correct spot where it needs to be in between the layers, especially if you're working with multiple layers? Well, there's a little trick for that. And to show you that, we're going to recreate this effect in PowerPoint where we have quite a lot of layers coming together and we want to organize them in a structured way. Let's start from a blank slide and we're going to add an image to our slide. 
We're going to right click and duplicate this line because we need the original later on. Go to picture format, remove background. And here we're going to mark all the areas that we want to keep. In our case, the mountain and the person on the mountain. Let's add the sides here, left and right, then everything is correct. And not forget our person. Keep changes, that's what we want. Let's already crop this image just a little bit. It's easier to select afterwards. And now we go to this page. We add a text box. Let's type in the word explore. Use the font Bebas Neue. Increase the font size by quite a lot. Make it yellow and bold. Right click format shape. And let's add a drop shadow to the text. That will make it stand out just a little bit more. Copy that previous element the cutout that we have and paste it on top. Now I'm going to add a few more layers for complexity and that's going to be the clouds. So let's add some transparent clouds here. There we go. And now we have a slide with quite a lot of layers. And for that, we can arrange them, go to Arrange tab and open the selection pane. Here, if we click on one of the items, it will select something on the on this slide. So this it has to be renamed. So let's rename it bottom right. Cloud bottom left, picture. This is the overlay picture, so we can lay it overlay, picture. Then we have a text box, could be explore, and then background image. Of course, you don't have to rename everything, but if you have a slide where it is important and you want to easily change things, this could be quite helpful. If you now drag the explore all the way to the top, it will appear on top of everything. If you do the same with the background image, all else will be sent to the back. So here you can rearrange the layers of your picture and easily find that correct positioning that you need. There's also a second trick. If you go to arrange and reorder objects, you can really visualize how these layers are stacked on top of each other. Here we can see the cloud is on top, then the second cloud, third slide is the overlay effect, then we go to the text layer and then the image layer. Here you can also grab different items to move them in different orders. Let's put the text to the front and then we can just play around with all of the settings that we have. Let's say we have this and we want to rearrange it to our normal slide. We would have the background image in the back. Then we would go for the text layer, adding the clouds. They can go to the front and the overlay can go in between the clouds and the text layer. Press OK if you're happy and this rearranges your slide. To top things off, we can just duplicate the slide and on the first one, hold control and scroll out a bit, drag the clouds to the side, select the word and drag it downwards. Select the second slide, transitions, morph, and this way you create a nice effect in PowerPoint, a cool opening slide with layers and you can easily order them using the selection pane. Now, with our slides being consistent and organized, let's ensure they are perfectly aligned for that sharp professional look. Brings us to number three, perfect alignment using smart guides. And the way it works is quite simple. You just go to the view tab and here you can select multiple items to help you with your alignment. First one is the ruler and that will put some rulers on the horizontal and vertical axis of your slides. You can add the grid lines to get some grid work on your slide. This will help you balance things out and position everything on the same height or length of your slide. And then we also have the guides and these guides can help you align things across different slides consistently. And that is what I want to look at today. If you click on guides, standard one horizontal and one vertical guide will appear in the middle of your slide, but you can modify them and you can drag them across to different areas on your slide. If you want to add more, you can just right click grids and guides and then add a vertical guide. There we go. And we can add it to the right or we can add a horizontal guide and then drag it to the other position that you want. This could give us quite a nice working area of our slide without going over the boundaries and making sure everything is nicely aligned. Now there's a few more things. If you right click grids and guides, you also have the grid options. And in the grid options, you can really play around with some personal tweaking of your grid. Let's say we want five grids per centimeter. That is a standard. Let's imagine we want to go to two grids and press OK. Then our grid system will change. You can also change the grid options based on any other preference that you want. 
The only thing I would advise is if you add snap objects to grid and this will help you a lot when making presentations. Let's try see what it does. Drag a shape on the slide and let's make it the same size as this grid. If we drag it to the side, you can see it always snaps to one of those dots in the grid. Also, if we move upwards or to the side diagonally, it will always snap to one of the dots on the grid. That is what a snap to grid really does. It's easy if we want to position multiple items on the same line or the same distance and have equal spacing in between the blocks. So that's what the snap to grid really helps with. Another thing, if we go to grids and guides, grid options, there's this display smart guides when shapes are aligned. If I uncheck this, what it will do is it will not really give any indication if I'm on the same length or height or if everything is evenly spaced. Now, if I turn it back on, grids and guides, grid options, display smart guides when shapes are aligned, you will see that these red lines will start to appear, these red arrows. And that helps us to really align things nicely on the slide. Let's say I put three large boxes on the slide. I copy it and I copy it once more and I want to space them evenly. It will assist me in doing that and kind of snap to the grid. That is quite a helpful trick if you didn't know that. That is quite a helpful trick to align your slides and work a lot faster in PowerPoint. So today we've learned to unlock the power of master slides for pictures and to really format it to your liking. Secondly, we've mastered organizing layers with the selection pane and giving order to our slides. Thirdly, we can properly align content using smart grids and rulers. So we no longer have to worry about any inconsistencies of our slides. Now, if you want to learn more about PowerPoint, make sure to click on the video on the screen right now.